Hello and welcome to another episode of World in Flames Collector's Edition Days of Decision 3 Combined Game Playthrough. This will be the uh, March-April 1943 turn that we will be starting. Uh, last turn uh, we saw just nothing but really atrocious weather everywhere. So the weather was bad from top to bottom. Uh, the turn went a total of 28 impulses, but uh, there was blizzards everywhere and snow and rain and storm and really not a whole lot got accomplished. It was, it was even so bad that the Russians couldn't get anything done in the winter. So, that being said, let's go and take a look at starting money for this turn. Now, starting money is uh, we have uh, Germany at minus 10, Japan at minus 1, Italy at minus 8, the Soviet Union at minus 4, the Commonwealth at minus 14, the USA at minus 14, China at 0, and Free France at minus 7. So I have recorded the bids for the major powers. We have four major powers bidding. Uh, keep in mind, last turn, there were a number of major powers that did not get to... Uh, do a political phase because the political phase ended early so they will be getting bonus bid points this turn well let's go take a look at, and see how the political order shakes out as you can see here from last turn Italy was the last major power that got a political option and the bidding had gone all the way down to China so we'll pick up the last card markers, we'll move the major power markers aside. And like I said, we have four major powers bidding. We had Germany bidding one, the US bidding one, Japan bidding one, and China bidding one. Now, Germany bid one, they're going to get six bonus bid points for their political effectiveness, which is six which is going to give them a 7, and their current political position is 5th. For 2, for a total of 9, that's going to put them in 1st. The U.S. bid 1, they're going to get 5 bonus bid points for their current political effectiveness, plus they're going to get 2 for their current political effectiveness, uh, political, current initiative position, sorry, that's a total of nine as well. However, the German political effectiveness is higher than the Americans, so the Americans will take second. The Japanese bid one. They're going to get four bonus bid points. Total of five. They're in the sixth position from last turn. That'll be six. Put them in third. Chinese bid one. They're going to get one bonus bid point. And they're in seventh position from last turn. They'll give them another one. That's a total of three. That'll put them in fourth. So the first last card marker goes on Germany, and the last last card marker goes on China. Now the remaining major powers, the Commonwealth has a plus four. That'll put them in fifth. The Soviets and the Italians are both at plus three. However, the Italian political effectiveness is three, and the Soviet is six. So the Soviets break that tie. Put them in six. The Italians in seventh, and the Free French in eighth. All right, Germany's up. Let's go see what the Germans want to do. Go over to the Indian Ocean. Seems to be the only place where there isn't a huge amount of counters at this point. The Germans are going to play German political option zero. L. I guess that's an L. Zero L, which is collaborators. So what that's going to do is that's going to add all the German uh, city-based volunteers to their force mix. Any city-based volunteers that the Germans currently possess the city of will be put on the board. This is going to cost one money, so I will pay for that. Oh, and the, I have to apply the treaty chart, so I will do that, and I will be right back with Germany activating a minor. Alright, the Germans got to activate a miner. 
there really isn't much out there to activate at this point. I mean, you can even see from the political display there isn't a whole lot left miners on the political display to begin with. But I think what they're going to do is there's a four Italian marker in Venezuela. They're going to activate that. And that'll move Venezuela, which is over here. I'll just move it too closer to Italy. And that's the end of that. There, we do not roll for the end of the political phase because there is a plus two to the die roll and you can't get a one when you get a plus two. So we will move on to the next major power, which will be the United States. The U.S., strangely enough, they can do that this year. They're going to gear up. It is the current year is greater than or equal to the year specified on the PM track. So the U.S. can gear up. Costs them 12 money. I will, there's no U.S. entry. I will put the markers out here. And I will come back with the U.S. activating a miner. Okay, now we activate a miner for the U.S. Uh, interestingly enough, there isn't a lot out there for the U.S. to activate either. And I think what we're going to do is we're just going to go, we got a plus two in Ireland, we're just going to go with Ireland. So grab the marker, come over here, status display. That's two for the U.S., that's going to move the Irish marker one spot closer to America. All right, we still have a plus two to the die. Well, the last card moves down to Japan because we're not rolling into political phase. It's only when one previously played option is a plus two to the die. It's not kind of a, uh, there's no chance of rolling a one. So now we go to Japan. Japan, interestingly enough, is also going to play their zero L option, which is collaborators. So I will apply the treaty chart, we'll add all the CBVs to the game, and um, come back with Japan activating a minor. Okay, Japan gets to activate a miner, and they're going to activate Brazil. There's a minus one for Japan there, and a plus one for the U.S. Neither are going to move the marker for Brazil, which is right here. It's right there. You can see it. It's not going to move the marker. It takes at least two points. Does Brazil have a treaty? All right, so we'll move on to China. Oh, actually, we have to roll to see if the political phase ends. That will be a one to end the political phase. Japan would be okay. Japan would like to show it to Chinese if they could. Well, six ain't gonna do it. Sorry. The uh, political phase continues. We have China. China. China is up. China's gonna a uh, gear up. They're gonna use their gear up. Their option three or option two rather. Uh, they they could have geared up as early as 1940, I believe. So they just didn't have the money at the time, but they're gonna do it now. Um, I will put the political markers out. There seems to only be one. That will be for Mexico. And that will be the end of the political phase. And uh, I will come right back after I roll initiative and weather. Keep in mind there is a plus three to the weather roll. And for the March-April turn, the higher the roll... The better the weather, that's the March-April is the second column. As you can see, 
higher the roll, the better the weather gets. A plus three, it's likely that the weather's gonna be half decent, at least in the temperate zone. So I'm, I'm kind of expecting that if the flashes win the roll, they're gonna go first. But we'll see, we'll see what happens. Uh, oh, and China has to activate a miner. Uh, before we end the political phase, they get to activate a miner. I really don't see anything for them to activate. I have to think about this for a second. Okay, the initiative roll came out <clears throat> an eight for the flashes, which modifies to a ten. A five for the Democrats, which modifies to a four, and a six for the Soviets, which is not modified <clears throat> due to the current ideological initiative modifiers, which are right here. So the fascists decided to go first, knowing that it was a fairly good chance of good weather. And uh, the uh, communists wanted to go last, and so that put the Democrats in the middle. And the weather roll ended up being a 10, which modifies 13, which is fair weather everywhere. There's no uh, modifier for the next weather roll, and the initiative, the impulse marker will move up one impulse per impulse, I guess. All right, let's take a look at uh, reinforcements, and uh, then we'll get started with the first impulse. Reinforcements for this turn are looking something like this. Here's the Germans. There was also several ships for all the major powers added to the construction pool. The Soviets look like something like that. Chinese are just above them. The Americans got a couple of headquarters coming in. A very nice CAG. The Italians, uh, I think that ship is a repair. The black unit is an Italian something. Death's head unit. Anyway. Uh, and the Commonwealth is getting a fighter with... That's a Hurricane 2D. It's an anti-tank fighter. And I got some ships. I think those are repairs as well. One of them might actually be a build. I will get these on the map. And I will come right back with the first set of impulses. Okay, so we are on the fascist first impulse. <clears throat> That's the first impulse anyways, because they went first. Uh, the Germans took a land action, the Italians took a land action, and the Japanese took a land action, and they all paid oil for it. So oh, uh, the other thing is that the Germans collapsed Vichy, France, and what happened with that was that <clears throat> the fleet, the French fleet, which was in Marseille, is rolled for surprise overrun. <clears throat> uh, the Germans captured the Emil Berain and the Dunkirk and three convoy points. These four ships got away. They rebased to here. And it's now Free French. Tunisia's Free French. The Italians have actually started moving up into Tunisia. Morocco is also Free French. And the Italians and Spanish have started moving down into Morocco. And um, yeah, the rest of the French fleet that could have got away could not <clears throat> because of two factors. First factor is there's only basing capacity they have for uh, allied ships is two little minor ports. And that would be in Tunisia here and here. The Italians hold Gibraltar, so the French fleet can't get out that way. And the Italians also have a hex up against the Suez Canal over here. So the, Italian, the French fleet can't get out that way. So they're scuttled. All right, let's get on with the first impulse. And we have Germany and Russia, which is clear weather everywhere. It's what happens when it's really, really terrible weather and you get a weather modifier and then you roll decent die, you're gonna end up with clear weather in March, April. So <clears throat> let's start, let's start 
grab the track first off. Let's start up here. The Germans have a five to one. The, I don't know if they do have a headquarters. The Soviets, they could add, well, it's up to the Germans first. They're going to add HQ support. That would be Von Bock. So the Soviets will also do defensive HQ support because he's adjacent to the hex. There is no air, uh, air cover, <clears throat> air support. Nothing's in range. The Germans do have mech which is going to give them a plus one. The two HQs cancel each other. One box of three, and this guy is a four, I believe. He's a four. So it just cancels each other. They don't have enough for a plus either way, plus or a minus. So we're going to have a five to one on the, assault, on the Blitzkrieg table with a plus one. The Germans get a five. This goes to a six which is star one breakthrough. So one Soviet unit is killed. One is shattered. I would say probably this guy is killed. One is shattered. He will return his reinforcements next turn. The Germans do get a breakthrough, however, There is a blocking Soviet unit here, so there's no way to break through, too. <clears throat> Moving on. We have a 6 to 1 here. We have... Uh, let's see. The Russians do have some air power they could throw in, and I think they're going to. Going to throw that in as ground support, so we are going to have an air battle. Well, we get the... There's the fighter stream, the bomber stream, and for the Soviets, bomber stream, fighter stream, 6.5 to 5 is a 1.5 differential, so that's going to be a plus 2, minus 2. Soviets roll first on the minus 2. They roll a 9. Attacker clears through any one bomber. So the German bomber does get through right here I believe yep and so now the Germans reply they roll a 14 on the plus 2 14 attacker abort attacker aborts uh, defenders front fighter or front bomber they're gonna de abort the front bomber we don't want to mess up our odds. Do this here. And the Russians all board. They don't need to stick around at bad odds. So the two German fighters will go back to wherever they came from. It's a three. It's a four. One, two, three. Well, we can land on. We can land right here. Yeah. We have a six to one. Plus one for armor. Now that should have been a plus two. No plus one for armor. No plus one for armor. And that's it. Six to one. Plus one for armor on the Blitzkrieg table. Rolled a four which is a five, which is a star 1B. So one unit is killed, one unit is shattered, and the Germans will kind of break through, I guess. So let's see, which one's gonna be shattered? I guess, I guess this guy will come back. This guy will go in the cadre box. Germans will not actually be able to break through because Forrest and, and the cost uh, motorized units two movement points and the hex beyond the breakthrough can only be one movement point. 
So we will, they will occupy the hex with these big giant panzer cores. And that is that. And we have a six to one down here. We have a ground strike to start. So we're gonna have a ground strike right here that's out of range of all the Soviet fighters. So we got a ground strike and a ground strike. We have two threes, that's two units. Roll them top to bottom. First unit, it's not flipped. The second unit is flipped, got a three. The second unit is flipped. That was the HQ. And then we got a six to one right here. That's going to be a plus one on the uh, Blitzkrieg table because I have, there's at least two Panzer Corps there. Six to one, I rolled a nine. Nine is a pretty decent roll. Uh, it seems it got out of the range of the camera. There we go. We're attacking this hex right here. We just rolled a nine. down right here because he's used uh, he's dead and the Germans get a breakthrough without flipping any units over these two guys go away all right let's see here we're going to put this one here. And I guess, yeah, nah, I'll put the 8-5 there. The 8-5 will break through with the 4-5. And there we go. We have a 6-1 to one down here. This is going to be at a plus 1 on a Blitzkrieg table. So far, things are not going too well for the Soviets. They got holes punched in their line everywhere. That's a five, six to one. Five is star one B. It's a forward modified to a five, which is a star one B. So he is dead. No German units are flipped over. Get these micro dice out of here. They are good to help you to uh, remember where your attacks are. It's going to go here, and Main Mainstein is going to go here. Just like that. All right, let's go down to the Middle East. And do the attacks down there. In the Middle East. Take a look at that. We got some attacks. We got first off, we got a ground strike here. There is no Commonwealth air power down here now. So I got a four and a two, and there's three units there, I believe. Yes. So we'll do the red will be the four, the green will be the two, and we'll roll the units in order. First unit. That is flipped. Got a red five and a green two. He's flipped over, Wavel. The next unit is a green one that flips that one as well. And the artillery unit is last. And we got a red one that flips that. Unit. So all three units are flipped over. That does not bode well or the Commonwealth down here. Not at all. And we have two attacks. Where's the city? There's a city around here somewhere. Yeah, I'll put this one here. Actually, Suez is right here, is it not? Yes, it is. You can go right there. So we have a six to one here with the air power. And that's going to be on the Blitzkrieg table and I'm gonna have a plus one. 
All right, these guys are going to go home. They're part of the attack. Yeah, it's got a range of nine. That's pretty good. Put him right here. All right. Six to one on the Blitzkrieg table. Let's check that out. Well, that's a six. Gives me a seven. Star to be. Commonwealth can't get a break today. They will get Cadre for that, though. Star to be. No units were injured in that. <laughs> you know how that is. Move that there. Let's move them all there. Alright. Uh, I think I misplaced something. Oh, yeah. Right here. Over here, we've got a 7 to 1, and I believe that's on the Blitz Creek table, and I think that's just dead. I think they're just dead. 7 to 1, yes, it's star to be. He is gone. And now, what do I occupy with? Do I send Rommel in? Um, probably the Italians. Let the Italians do it, because if I send uh, Germans in, they're going to, they got a pretty good attack right now. Yeah, we'll leave that, we'll let the Germans finish them off. That's a good idea. So no attacks up here. Now we got some real fun attacks over here in the uh, Far East. We have a Japanese attack in India and a two to one attack and uh, China. We'll do China first. First off, we have some ground strikes. Uh, the Japanese lack of tactical air power strikes again. These are twos, so they're not going to do the greatest. But we're all on top to bottom. First up is Chang. And I got a red one. That's going to flip Chang. And we'll just roll them all. Okay, the next unit down. Uh, nothing. And the bottom unit. Right, another red two. That'll flip that unit. So Chang is flipped. The 4-2 is not. And the artillery is flipped. So we have a two to one attack. We're going to add HQ support. This is the, uh, this unit here is the tactical air support. So he's going to fly back. Nothing happens to him anyways. So I'm going to put him right there, I guess. Yep. Two to one, plus one, plus two, plus three. Plus three. Two to one on the assault table with a plus three. Holy cow. Holy, holy moly. <laughs> a 9 is a 12 on the 2 to 1. 12 is star 2S. So two units die. That's probably going to be that one. I think they're going to let the HQ be shattered. So he will come back next turn. And the artillery, the very expensive Chinese artillery, is dead as well. These will be cadres. And then the Japanese get to occupy. I think they're going to occupy with this unit, this unit, and the artillery. HQ will stay back. Because he's already flipped over, so he's done his job. He's very happy with that attack. That was a really good attack. All right, now we got a four to one over here. That is tactical air support, so he will fly home, flip over, go away. Probably right there. Can I reach that far? Six, two, four, six, yes. All right, four to one. Uh, this is going to be straight up on the assault table. 
I could add an HQ support. I don't know. The Japanese, would they do that? Add HQ support. It's going to give me a plus one. I'm going to give the Japanese a plus one. Four to one. Salt. Yeah, I think we have to add in Yamamoto. He's going to go and add in HQ support. So that's a four to one plus one. Oh, another good roll for the Japanese. They're finally getting some half decent rolls. That's an eight, which is a nine, it is star 2S. So both Commonwealth units are toast. And those were not Kyber. And then the Japanese can occupy. And they will, obviously. I mean, you dumb if you don't, right? And I think that uh, the artillery would flip over if I occupy with that. So let's not do that. Let's put this guy in there. Mechanized. All right. So I believe that is it for attacks for the fascists. And I will be right back after I finish. The Democrat impulse, and if there's no tax, then I finish the Communist impulse. Okay, for the democracies, the uh, the, uh, <clears throat> did, uh, the U.S. and uh, Commonwealth did navels, naval actions to get their fleets out, protection against subs, and try to bottle up the German fleet in the Bay of Biscay. So, also trying to bottle up the Italians from coming out of the Mediterranean. Well, they did that, plus they got their escorts out. Uh, escorts out, out right there as well. Uh, they didn't do, they also, the Commonwealth sorted their fleet out here. In the Arab Arabian Sea, tried to stop the Japanese a little bit. Uh, they moved a whole bunch of transports around, trying to get things done down here. And the Americans sent their fleet out into the Coral Sea. That's basically what we got there. Okay, we moved on to the Soviets. Soviets managed to get somewhat of a line. A lot of those units on the edge of the board right here, they all came from this area over here. And I paid double for the uh, movement cost for the Pacific map before getting to the European map. And uh, now I'm about to start the fascist turn. I'll be right back as soon as I finish that. Okay, the weather roll for this set of impulses was an 8. Let me check that, make sure. 8. Yes, it was an 8. So it's rain in the Arctic, fair everywhere else, and the impulse marker will move up 2. So the Germans took a land, the Italians took a combined, and the Japanese took a land. Alright, so let's start with the Italians. They got themselves a little attack down here in the Near East, in the Near East, right here. Um, let's see, we got, uh, now I have to add it up again. I believe it is a five to one. It is a, not a five to one, it is a three to one. It's 36 to 12, three to one. With the air power has ground support and we use HQ support from this HQ there are two flipped over units, so that's going to be a plus one, plus three total. Plus three total for a three to one on the assault table. Let's see if the Italians can be a hero. Well, the Italians are a hero today. Yes, sir, rolled an eight. Not bad at all. So three to one on the assault table, an eight, which is an 11, is star 2S. 
I think the British, the Commonwealth position in the Middle East is all but gone. At least they have lost, um, I would say they have lost, I'll put them in a minute, the, uh, the Suez in Egypt. These will all be cadres. There's an HQ right there. Bravo. Just got toastified. No Italian units are flipped over, except the HQ over here. He is flipped over. And uh, they get to Occupy. That's not flipped over. I think that the uh, Italians have done quite, quite, quite well down here, amazingly enough. And I'm pretty sure they're... they're um, and the reason for that was their amphibious invasion over here. So they've got the Commonwealth split between two different areas. All right, let's move on to the Germans. They have a bunch of attacks in the temperate zone, obviously, northern temperate. Can't really attack in the rain with two column shifts. It's kind of bad. There we go. I think I got them all. So let's do this one first. We have a five to one before there's a big air battle up here. And the Soviets are gonna let the ground strike go through. So we have a five, there's two units. The red ones, the red one will be the top one. Okay, we got a green three. So that's the bottom unit is flipped. Uh, oh, that's the armored unit. Oh. Hmm. Okay. Now we have a nice big air battle up here. Let's see, we have, I'm gonna have to write this down. I'm gonna have to write this down. The Soviets have 7.6, 8.1, 8.5. The Germans have 8.7, 9.5. Ten point one. That's a difference of one point six. So it's going to be plus two minus two for the first round. So the Soviets get to roll first. Soviets are rolling first. They're on the minus two column. They roll a seven. Seven. Defender abort. Defender abort's own front fighter or front bomber. Well, we're going to have to abort our front fighter because we need to get the bomber through. I probably could do a 4 to 1. That probably would be okay. But Now the Germans roll on the plus 2. They roll a 19. On the plus 2 is attacker destroyed. AX, AX, attacker, destroys defender's front fighter or front bomber. We're going to destroy the front bomber. Actually, I should probably destroy the front fighter. Yeah, we're going to take that. And the pilot is killed because it's in the red. So now we have, we got to recalculate before we roll the next round. We have oh, 6.5, 6.9. For the Soviets and we still have 10.1 for the Germans. Now we're on a three column, plus three and minus three. So the Soviets roll on the minus three. Might have to give this up. <laughs> it's getting worse and worse. And they roll on the minus three. Roll a 14, twin sevens. That is a blank, so that's no effect. The Germans reply. They roll uh, even worse, a 10. Oh, a 10 is attacker clears. Attacker clears through any one defending bomber. So the attacker clears through any one defending bomber. So I have to, I have to clear through this guy. So he makes it through. So one Soviet bomber made it through. Uh, now the Soviets roll again on the minus three. 
they roll a seven, which is a blank. Oh, they're doing great. Actually, the Germans are the ones shooting themselves in the foot. And they will roll, and a reply, and they roll a 20. A 20 is AX. We're going to kill the bomber. And the pilot is dead because it's a red box again. And I think at this point. Uh, no, the Soviets are going to keep going. This guy goes home. Soviets are going to keep going. So the Soviets roll. Remember, the Germans haven't cleared through their bomber yet. They roll on the minus three column. A eight. Okay, and minus three attacker clears through one defending bomber. So the defending bomber, that in this case would be the Germans, gets through. It's not going to make a difference because it's going to be a four to one attack now. And the Germans roll in reply. They roll on a plus three. You get a 15. And that's defender destroy. Defender destroys his own front fighter or front bomber. So the defender, that's this guy, the Yak 9T is destroyed. But they do get the pilot for that. So they do recover the pilot from that one. Now both sides will abort because there's really no sense in staying. And the odds for this battle is going to be a 4 to 1 because of the Soviet bomber that got through. Yeah. yeah, that's an eight, so he can go all the way back here. He's a three. Go here. He's a four. Put him here. Or even right here. I guess that's probably good enough. Alright. So the bomber can go home because he's done his thing back to here They're pretty much all the air power is pretty much exhausted now the Soviet bomber did his thing and we go here and now we the five to one just got turned into a four to one so we got a plus one plus two for armor uh, they're using HQ benefits from Zhukov and we're using HQ benefits so uh, the Germans are using HQ benefits from where are you I know he's here somewhere. It's right here. I already flipped him over. That's uh, good area. So, 4 to 1, plus 1, plus 2. They pretty much cancel each other out. This is a Blitzkrieg table. Plus 2, 4 to 1, roll the 7. It's a 9, star 2S. That's actually really bad. So, both these Soviet units are dead. The, none of the German units are flipped over, except the HQ, which is already flipped over. So he's going to go here. HQ gets to stay behind. And that 9-5 armored unit will move up to there. Alright there, just like that. Now we have a 4-1 to one over here. It's kind of, there's already a flipped unit underneath. It's 12 defending factors, 6 for the HQ, and 6 for this because it's anti-tank. It's a SU-85, so it doubles when fighting armor, and there's armor right there. So it's going to be 4 to 1, it's going to be plus 1. I have a, the Germans have a vast superiority in armor, plus 2 on the Blitzkrieg table. 4 to 1, plus 2. Roll a five, which is a oh, four to one. I'm sorry, five, which becomes a seven, is star breakthrough. So these units I go back on the chart to come in as reinforcements. And the Germans achieve a breakthrough. 
sort of, kind of. Not much of a breakthrough, but they'll take whatever they can get at this point. Yep, right there. Over here, we have a five to one, plus one, on the Blitzkrieg table. That's a seven. Seven, five to one, Butts Creek table, which is an eight, star to be. That Soviet unit is healed. He is healed. And that's a breakthrough. Uh, oh, we're running out of armor. Uh oh. Uh oh, SpaghettiOs. Hmm. Well, we'll do that. We'll put both of these here. Actually, I can put that there. Leave that there. That's okay, because if he wants to attack that, go for it. All right. That one's done. Hey, we have a six to one right here on the assault table. Six to one assault table. I roll a ten. I roll a ten for the Germans on the assault table. Six to one. I can already guess what that is. It's going to be five to one. Uh, star 2s and I roll a 10 and that's that's not looking good for the Russians down here already the beginning of summer of 43 and the Germans are pounding away on the Caucasus already that is bad actually that could have been on the is there any armor here that could have been yeah there's motorized but I don't think there's any no nah, there's no armor I don't think motorized can break through. I think it has to be armor. Anyways, he's toast. Looks to me like the Russians are going to lose another oil center. Push the motorized guy through. Yeah, don't look too good down here at all. At all. We got multiple German breakthroughs here. This is kind of a little pocket for this motorized army. And there's a breakthrough down here towards Grozny. Not looking too sharpy sharp, if you know what I mean. Alright, let's go over and see what Japan's doing. Japan's got themselves in attack. They got a 2 to 1 here. After the ground strike, which is the two, there's two units there, so the red die will be the top one. I did indeed roll a two, and it is on the red die. So that flips over the top unit, which is the land child militia. And that's, again, that's the air power for the Japanese is all but exhausted over here. Yeah, we got a 2 to 1, plus 1. We're going to use HQ benefits. That's going to give them a plus 2 on the assault table. yippee ki -yay. 2 to 1 on the assault table, plus 2. These really bad attacks. There's been previous turns where the Japanese have attacked like this and had just had the most terrible results possible to them, but not this time. Roll the 9. That's a plus two. That's going to be an 11. That is star 1B. Oh, no, no. That's the wrong table. No, I'm sorry. 2 to 1. That's going to be an 11. It's going to be cross 2S. So two units toastified for the communists. Two communist ditties. The Chinese have taken a beating this turn. A real beating. But also half the Japanese units have to flip over. Half. Well, let's occupy with that guy. Let's move the artillery up. He's gonna have to flip. Let's move the HQ up. He will he's already he's one of the ones that flips. So move the artillery up. It flips him. Actually. Let's let's move the eight. Yes. Let's move the... Where is he? What did I do with him? Oh, here. Let's move him up. 
Let's move uh, this big artillery unit up. That will be a flip. The 8-3, I believe, mountain in this terrain is going to flip anybody. Yes, yeah, so everything is going to be flipped by moving up, so it doesn't matter. I've more than flipped half the units. And I'm going to put the HQ up there as well. Whatever I did with it. Uh, see, see, there I am. I'm moving stuff. I lose it. I lose the unit. So that's going to be one, two, three. All flipped over. And that, that one will be the fourth one. Oh, that should be that. That should be that. And he can land there. I think he was there anyways. So things are not actually looking very good for the Chinese either. I mean, we got Chung King right here. Oh, they had an anti-aircraft fire on it. I should have rolled that first. Let's see. Oh, no effect. Not quite enough. Twenty-four point. Oh, actually, it's twelve points. One aircraft. The lowest of four dice. So, and uh, the lowest. I just rolled a four. That's not going to do anything on that green die. It's not going to do anything to it because it's the lowest of four dice. So it doesn't matter. So I'll leave it the way it is. All right. I think that's the end of the fascist impulse. I think we will move on to the Democrats. I will see if they got anything up their sleeves, and then later to the uh, Communists. We'll be back in a sec. Okay, the Commonwealth trying to get some kind of containment for the Japanese here in India. The Chinese. The units flipped over everywhere. Shouldn't have been flipped over. Just kind of moved one unit right there. That was it. So they got their line back in place. China does. The only problem with that is that Chongqing is now exposed on three sides to a Japanese attack. Uh, the British and the Commonwealth and the French kind of moved over here. The French brought up some units. The French took a land. Not that it matters too much. The Americans, taken and combined, moved some forces down to Free French Morocco. Looks like a, another front is about to open up. It's a good thing because the front over here in the Egypt is all but gone. Uh, the communists, on their impulse, they tried to patch together a line again. It's not looking good. Uh, actually, the rain in the Arctic zone ha hampered them as much as it did the Germans. Uh, air power is all but exhausted down here. So I will... Oh, let's roll weather. See what we get for weather. The, the communists have done their impulse. Can't end the turn yet. It's at a zero still. We will roll weather. The start of the German impulse. This is March, April. I rolled a seven. A seven. That's going to be rain in Arctic, rain in North Temperate. Fair, uh, Mediterranean, fair in North Monsoon, rain in South Monsoon, and fair in South Temperate. I don't know if that's good or bad, but I'll be back right after with, with any attacks for the uh, fascist impulse. We are back to the fascist impulse. Um, uh, the Germans took a land impulse and paid offensive points to conduct one naval action. And they have a potential U-boat strike here in the Pharos Gap. So we'll roll to see if uh, anybody... Roll to see if anybody finds anybody. Oh, 
rule the four and the seven. Four and the seven. So because it's raining, because it's raining, uh, we add plus one to search rule. So the four becomes a five and the seven becomes an eight. Nobody found anybody. All right. Uh, the Italians also took a land action and they just moved a whole bunch of stuff around. They don't really didn't do too, too much. They don't have an attack yet. They have too much air power flipped over to actually make an attack. All right. And then we got one German attack in Southern Russia. We have a 10 to one here, which is reduced to eight to one which on the Blitz Creek table is automatic. And he is out of supply, so there will be no cadre there. He's just dead, and uh, they can occupy the hex, which they will do. And then we got, uh, let's see, oh, we got Japan. Japan's got some naval action. They got uh, this one right here. Let's see if they find anything. Let's see, this is the North Monsoon Zone. That is clear. That zone is clear. Well, we got a three and a four. So a three and a four is a no good. No good there. Well, we got uh, potential action down here in the Coral Sea. That is in the North Monsoon Zone as well, I think. No, it's in the South Monsoon Zone. And that is raining. So we're going to add one to the search die rolls. We got a four for the um, for the, uh, the Japanese and a ten for the Allies, I guess you could say it. So, we got to add one to the search die. So, four becomes a five. However, this is Kidu Batai. They have carry air groups with a range of seven in their fleet. So, I can. That subtracts one from the die. Or does that add one to the box? I don't know. I'll have to check that. Okay, so the Japanese did find the Americans. They have a total of seven surprise points and uh, a potential for 17 air to sea factors. That's half due to rain. It's actually 34. <clears throat> uh, it's actually 19 because I didn't count the naval air unit. The Americans, who didn't find anything, have two fighters up for cap, so we'll have an air battle before we actually have the naval battle. There's the Japanese. Fighters escorting the bombers, and there's the Americans fighters. Now, if they get any bombers, they get turned back or whatever, then I will just take them off the carriers as they are, <clears throat> rather than no dig them all out. All right, we got six. It's like seven total here. And Five point five is going to be plus two minus two. So the Americans roll first on the minus two chart. They roll a 10, the minus two chart. Defender clears through a bomber. So we'll clear through a bomber. Now the Japanese on the plus two chart, they roll an 18 on the plus two chart is AX. So the Americans lose a fighter and I do believe the pilot is also killed because that is in the yellow box and for the second round um, Japanese roll 11 I mean the Americans roll 11 sorry so 11 is uh, defender clears through another bomber good and then the Japanese roll Actually, this is on the plus three, so that's an eight. Defender abort. So 
And they abort their butt fighter, and that's the end of that. That is the end of that. Now I gotta work out anti aircraft. Okay, so the anti aircraft, they had enough uh, to uh, get uh, three lowest die out of six. We opted, the Japanese opted for two uh, shifts to the left, so it was the highest die of three. And naturally, they rolled a 10, so they destroyed two combat air groups. Um, it's a Japanese player's pick which combat air group, so they took the two crappiest ones, destroyed those. They're left with 16 air to sea points. And they'll shift that one column over. They have 19 ships. Nineteen ships. It's going to be three sunk, two damaged, one aborted. So the Japanese will go for the Essex class carrier first. That would be the Lexicon two for a sunk. I roll to save it. They need to roll better than a five, and they roll a one, which means it's sunk. It's up to the Americans next. They will pick the Idaho, an old World War One, I, I think. Yeah, 1915, World War One battleship. That's a three, better than a three, we'll save it. And an eight does save it, so it's damaged. And the last sunk will go on to Yorktown. That's a six. And it rolled an 8, so it is saved as it's damaged as well. Now we have two damages. Americans will pick uh, the North Carolina, which is a 2. They roll a 10, so it's uh, it saves its damage, which means it's aborted. And the Japanese will pick, they'll pick the Lexington, it's already damaged, well, not the Lexington, the uh, Yorktown, it's already damaged, and it's sunk. And finally for an abort, the you, the Americans will pick the Washington. It's half aborted. So that's it for that round. Now we got to roll to see if they find each other again. Americans are probably just going to abort. They just lost two carriers. I think the Americans are aborting. And that will leave the Japanese to land, dis disembark there too. I can't do that this round. All right, so that's the end of that. I think that is the end of the fascist impulse. And I will move on to the democracies. We are back to the fascist turn. <clears throat> the weather roll was uh, snow in the Arctic, snow in the North Temperate, rain, rain, storm, rain, basically. <clears throat> So we had the uh, Japanese did a combined. They ended up landing down here. 
and uh, where is that? Noimua, no Mui, whatever it is. <clears throat> Took that, no losses. We also have a naval battle here. I've already rolled for it, two and an eight. So that one's going to be a, a fight. All right, we'll go over to the Middle East first. We got a five to one here. Let me put those so I know what we got going on here. I, I don't know if I'm actually, uh, no, nobody found anybody because I have to add to the search die because of that. So that, there's no naval battle there. All right, got a five to one here. It was seven to one, now it's five to one because of the rain, I believe. But it is on the Blitzkrieg table. Uh, we have to think, uh, should we commit Gort? He will give another minus one. But then he'll be flipped over. Probably not a good idea. Oh, no. We have five to one on the Blitzkrieg table. Plus one. And the nine. They go nine. I believe that is two. Star 2B, so both units are dead, and I don't believe that, that one will be a cadre because it's right next to an HQ, but the Iraqi unit, the Iraqi unit is just dead, so we'll occupy, Rommel can break through, thank you, yeah, that looks good, just like that. Oh, excuse me, that was actually a 9, which would have been a straight-up 9 because of the minus 1 because the Hungarian Italian ally were participating, and it's still the same result. <clears throat> okay. Let's move on up to the... up to southern Russia. We got a number of attacks up here. And there's, no, there's only one... I think there's only one sortie. Rear power somewhere? Yeah, it's up here. Okay, so let's start up on the northern fringe. We got a 5 to 1 here. Uh, the Russians are going to commit HQ benefits. So it's going to be a minus 1 and a plus 1. So it's going to be even. 5 to 1 on the Blitzkrieg table, even. 5 to 1, even. That's a 5. Star B. So the HQ goes on the production chart to arrive next turn. The Germans will not be able to break through because basically I'm gonna I'm gonna advance with this unit. Leave them two there and this unit and that unit. Just like that. That's uh, more problems for the Russians. <clears throat> All right, over here we got four to one with the air power, which is halved. Snow, no interceptors that can intercept. This guy is supposed to be turned over the last time. All right, this, uh, this is actually the last air unit on the whole Eastern Front except the bunch that are up around Moscow. It's not turned over. All right. It's got a five to one. We have a plus one for armor. A plus one because he's flipped over. So that's a five to one plus two. That becomes a seven. Five becomes a seven. Five to one, a seven. Star one B. Uh, he has to go somewhere and turn over. I think right here is probably a good place for... No, probably not. Probably like right here. So, the 5-4 will be lost. The HQ, which is Zhukov, will come back next turn. That is two HQs off the board already. Things are looking grim. Grim, grim, grim. All right, we'll occupy the hex. Over here we have another five to one. This also is going to be plus one. Really, 
that's a four. It's not as good. Oh, I'm sorry. That is a three. So it's going to be cross one R. Cross one R. Let's see. So one dies. Okay, the infantry division will die. One has to retreat. I think here is probably a good place. And half these units are going to be flipped over. Well, that one's going to be flipped over. And I guess this one. Alright, and then uh, we got this one right here. That is a 7 to 1. That's going to also be a plus 1. Uh, I think 7 to 1 is automatic, is it not? Yes, it is. Star 2B. So he is dead. And that is a breakthrough. I don't think I can go on to the next board because you know, we're going to put that there. We'll leave the HQ here. Oh, they got two HQs here. Oh, that's kind of dumb. Yeah, actually, we'll move that HQ forward. Over here, we got a six to one. That's a plus one. I rolled a ten. I already, I know what that result is. Crispy critter. Crispy critter. All right. Let's see. Whoops. Six to one with a ten. I think that is. Well, that's actually the assault table. Yeah, it's the same thing. Star 2S. All right. We'll put this guy here. This guy here. And we'll bring the 5 4 mountain up. The Soviets have some serious issues down here. The Commonwealth has some serious issues down in the, the Middle East. Things are looking seriously bad at this point. Uh, all right, we'll roll to see if the turn ends. And we'll continue on. A six, the turn does not end. The turn just ended on after the communist impulse, and I'm looking at things. And this is March, April. We're going to be moving into May, June, July, August. Both of those turn turns are ideal weather for armored operations, especially on the Eastern Front. And I, I just don't know. I don't. I think the. Well, let's take a look. <clears throat> the Eastern Front, look at this, Grozny's going to fall, I already can't use it, and then we got, in fact, they could have, yeah, that's right, okay, you got, uh, you got another hole here on the line, so they punched a hole here, they punched a hole here, and they punched a hole here. Here, here, and here. And all these, 28 goes to this hex over here. 27, that's that hex as well. 26, that's that hex as well. And then you have uh, 24 which is I think right here so they've basically punched a hole through to the Caspian Sea plus look up here this northern Russian line right in through here though it looks kind of beefy when you get up a ways you, you start getting stuff like this and that and that and then it's not well the Germans are weak too I mean they got 
smaller stacks up and through here. They're all six and seven point stacks though. So I don't know. I think taking this into consideration, taking the fact that it's going to be nothing but good weather from here out. This guy's not supposed to be there. It's supposed to be there. Do we? And then go down and take a look at the Middle East. You know that ain't going to last. One, it's out of supply, or it will be. Right now it's drawing supply through the Eastern Mediterranean, but it's interdicted by this naval unit, so it doesn't even have supply. was using this little minor port over here for supply. Um, so all of Egypt is gone, which means that the Italians can now move into Lower Egypt. I don't know where you can go from there. I don't think you can go from anywhere from there. Other than the fact that the Italian Navy can now move into the Arabian Sea, which really put a hammer on the, uh, the Commonwealth over here. Uh, the other thing I wanted to note was that two solid months for the Germans to get into this area. They're just going to move right down in through here and then right in through here. And so much for all this. This will all be toast. It'll be gone. Looking at the Japanese situation, I don't know what happened. They just got so many ships now. The Americans don't seem to be able to do too much. I think I might have made some mistakes with the Americans. But the situation in China, though it looks kind of stable, a uh, few key attacks here and there that succeed, and Japan's going to break that wide open. Wide open. Same thing with in India. Few reinforcements to India. Things are going to start looking grim for the British uh, Commonwealth there as well. Now down here in the South Pacific, we have Japanese units dominating the Coral Sea. The American fleet fled because it lost two carriers. Couldn't stand up. So I don't know. I think that I'm going to say that... That and the submarine problem over here, the British don't seem to be able to get a hold of. And the German fleet, based in France, can use that HQ right there for supply. And he just basically shuffles back and forth between uh, Brest and uh, Bordeaux in this bad weather. The Spanish, the Spanish fleet down here, the Italian fleet. Yeah, the Americans are starting to launch a counteroffensive in, in uh, Morocco. I don't know. I got to think about this. I don't. I think the game is over. I, I don't think that the neither the communists nor the allies can recover from it at this point. I think yeah. So the American production is going to be. One and, uh, one and three quarters, so they're going to be producing like 80. But Germany's going to be in the 60s. So. And the Soviets are going to be hurting. <laughs> they're going to be hurting because they just lost a bunch of oil. In the next two turns, they might lose most of their oil. They do have one oil resource way up here. And that's it. All the rest comes from the Caucasus and, and uh, their conquest of Persia. So that's four oil there. Oh, there's another one right here, but that one will fall too. I mean, I could play on, I guess. Um, I just don't see how the allies can recover from this. So I'm going to say uh, the fascists are going to win this game. The communists and the western allies are going to concede. So I'm going to do a short video after this of what I think I did wrong with each power, what I think I did right with each power, and uh, maybe some uh, changes if I play this game again, which I think I probably will, but I want to do a few other things first. So I think that's, uh, that's going to be a wrap, and uh, like I said, I'll uh, do another video uh, detailing uh, the pros and cons of each ideology's uh, strategy. And uh, we'll go from there. So uh, I'd like to thank everybody for watching so far and uh, liking my videos. I appreciate it. And uh, I will be doing another short video probably sometime in the next week and posting that about 
what I think uh, has happened and, and um, my uh, analysis of how the game ran. I do intend to do some other videos of other types of games. Uh, the group I'm in, we, we do a lot of miniatures, so I want to do some recordings of that and post those as well. So, uh, and until I do the next video, uh, thanks for watching and uh, see you next time.